The rise of drone technology. We look at how unmanned aerial vehicles are being used in Canada and whether privacy concerns outweigh the benefits. I'm Afan Chaudhry. Welcome to Globe Now. Drone technology has made incredible leaps and bounds in recent years. Real estate agents are using them. They're also being used to inspect bridges, pipelines, crops, and electrical towers. And police would love to add a few drones to their toolbox if they haven't already. But with drones come all kinds of concerns. Safety, for example. Canada's Transport Safety Board is investigating whether a drone came within dozens of meters of an Air Canada flight landing at Vancouver Airport recently. And then there's privacy, as one Seattle woman recently discovered. She says her privacy was invaded when an unmanned drone appeared outside her apartment window. So the challenge is growing, and in Canada, the challenge belongs to Transport Canada. How to regulate the use of drones? Shana Gersher has been studying drones in Canada at the Institute of Political Economy at Carleton University. We've reached her in Ottawa. Welcome, Shana. Hi, thank you. What is the example of the use of drones right now that poses the biggest challenge? Well, I would say one of the biggest challenges with drone uses right now in Canada is when, for instance, in March of this year, we had the Ontario Provincial Police deploy a drone over peaceful protesters congregating to bring awareness to the much needed issue of the disproportionate number of missing Indigenous women in Canada. Mm -hmm. And the problem with using a drone for that kind of use is that it infringes on not only our privacy, but our protected civil rights and freedoms, such as freedom of assembly and of expression. But do you see any examples of how drones can be beneficial? Absolutely. Drones are a versatile technology with numerous benefits and also they can offer cost savings depending on the size of drone. Mm -hmm. So for instance, some beneficial uses that we're seeing in Canada are farmers deploying the technology to monitor the health of their crops. There's also the police deploying this technology for search and rescue, which saves lives. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember that with those beneficial uses come those uses that can be um, intimidating for people that want to express their political opinions. And also they can be incredibly invasive drones. Let's take the case of the woman in Seattle complaining about a drone outside her apartment window. Are, are there any Canadian parallels? Well, not that we've heard of to that kind of degree. Um, however, we do have a problem with some recreational users that do not know the safety laws in place that are flying these technologies very close to airports, to aircraft, and there have been complaints for instance, in the city of Ottawa, uh, of drones flying in residential areas above homes. So Shana, what is being done to address the privacy issue when it comes to drones in Canada? Well, you see, not too much at the moment because a regulatory framework is set up to address the airplane characteristics of the technology. So that focuses on safety, but drones are flying sensors. So we also have to attend to the sensory component of the technology, and that's not happening. Moreover, we are undergoing significant changes in our regulatory framework, which pose some questionable, or they're very con there's concerns for privacy in these changes. For instance, I'll give you some examples. We are seeing that there are changes happening on the certification process to fast track the kinds of uses that people want to be deploying. We're gonna see the deregulation or nearly the deregulation of a popular class of drone. And also we're harmonizing our rules with the United States. The plan is to kind of create a seamless cross-border operation and remove the so-called regulatory red tape mm. with the U.S. And that poses some concerns for our civil liberties and for other protected freedoms that we have here in Canada. Interesting, Shana. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Oh, thank you so much. Well, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on drones? Does the potential for good outweigh the possible downsides of the technology? Tweet us at Globe Now. Well, speaking of how drones are being used by companies or hobbyists, you really need to see them in action to appreciate what they can do. And sometimes, as the Globe's technology editor, Shane Dingman, reports, it can border on the bizarre. You know what the best thing about having drones infiltrate civilian life more and more? They provide us with new experiences, and they give us perspectives on life that we had never previously seen. Remotely operating drones are showing up in stranger and stranger places all the time. Drones on the farm, drones for news gathering, 
drones for package deliveries, drones for goose chasing, drones for pipeline inspections, drones for art, drones for promo tools, and drones for police surveillance and tactical military use. In Canada, there are only a couple hundred licensed drone operators doing things like surveying mines or running businesses like the Ottawa-based Goosebuster, who uses an octocopter with a sound system that blasts predator noises to chase off pooping geese. There's a growing commercial use of drones for agriculture in Japan, Uruguay, and Brazil. Things like sampling crops and monitoring cattle and even spraying pesticides. That would be a good fit here in Canada, but our laws make it difficult to experiment with this kind of gear. If your UAV is under 35 kilograms, you don't need a permit to fire it up and fly it around. It's just like a model airplane. But that changes if you have any plans to make commercial use of the drone. For things like news footage or crop inspections, Canadian aviation regulations force you to apply for a special flight operations certificate with Transport Canada. That process can take 10 to 20 days, which may be why only 1,000 permits were issued last year. But unlike other aircraft, you don't need to show proficiency with a drone, nor do you have to have it inspected. And there's also a line in the regs that says you can only fly UAVs over areas that would permit a safe landing on a surface without hazard to persons or property in the event of any emergency requiring immediate descent, which basically outlaws it for any urban context, particularly if you are flying something with eight whirling blades. What's clear is that Canadian law is just as unprepared for the drone revolution as the geese are. Well, that's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. How do you feel about the way drones are being regulated in Canada? And do you think the benefits outweigh some of the privacy concerns? Tweet us at Globe Now. Thanks for watching. I'm Afan Chaudhry.